All right, welcome to Culture Couch Live. So a couple of weeks ago, we welcomed a new team member, James, and this week we've got Melina. But firstly, our uh, staple diet is uh, Jared Murphy and Carly Lee. So uh, g'day, guys, before we talk to Melina. How- Hi, Rizzy. Hi. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Now, Melina, welcome to the Culture Couch Live and welcome to Performance by Design. So thank probably you. my first question is a pretty broad question. So in, in your sort of... Yeah, you know, corporate life. Um, what does culture mean to you? It's a it's a good question, Rizzy, because it's it is at the heart of every organisation. I think culture is everything, and I'm not understating that at all. Um, culture is what leads to the results, and I know that we say that um, at Performance by Design, but the reality, I think, in my experience, is that a lot of pe- a lot of organisations can claim to have a good or a healthy culture, and that's great. Um, but I think increasingly acknowledging that and understanding why and what makes it a healthy culture is the only way to continue it and sustain it. So I think that is all something that has to be looked at and has to be worked on and nurtured. Um, and the truth about it is, is that the people are the culture and that's the long and the short. And when the people are right and their mindset's right and they're committed and they love what they do and they love working for their leader, then You've got you've got the right culture, but you do need to be cognizant of it, and you need do need to understand how to create a good culture, and don't just allow it to happen. So, Mel, you you mentioned then um, in your experience, what what is your experience? Talk us through your, I guess you you know the key parts of your professional career and and how you've ended up here, and why why you wanted to come and work at PBD. What what is it that interests you in this space? Sure. Yeah, it's been it's been quite a journey and an untraditional journey, I might say. Um, so my undergraduate degree is as a speech pathologist. So a lot of my, um, you know, the, my academic background is in communication with a health slant. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I studied that for a long time. Um, I pushed through it and I took a gap year. That gap year led me into media, and um, that was a twenty year gap year. So uh, I fell into a, very fortunately, fell into a great career in in media, um, in the corporate setting thereafter. So my experience is with um, a couple of media outlets with Foxtel and Network 10. Um, And I I had the the, the absolute, you know, fortune of working for great companies with great people. But what I said earlier really did, did, um, come to fruition after a few years of working with these with these companies, you really understand that you can have an excellent strategy, but without the right culture, you're dead. And it, it was it's that simple. And did you you were lead, you led teams? Yes, I think at one point we were eighty strong. Um, so there was a lot of uh, there were big offices, um, lots of people, lots of departments lots of remits, which is not unusual for for, um, companies of of that size, Um, and lots of different personalities, most importantly and most most wonderfully, actually. Um, So the tapestry of the people was what actually made it such an awesome place to work. But there was a lot of work done in the leadership team to make sure that we did maintain that culture, acknowledging that without the right culture, um, you don't get the results, and it's that simple. I, look, before I hand over to Carly, it's interesting because uh, a couple of friends in the media business, and it's a little bit similar footy, isn't it? Because you get the ratings, and and it's a really emotional roller coaster, isn't it? You're up or down. But I did realise you can always win a demographic. It might be thirty five yeah. to forty left handed golfers that wear their <laughs> shoe on the yeah you know, the right foot sort of thing. So I did I did learn that through the media. Yes, but, I mean we talk a lot about emotion. You know, when you're talking about culture, it's almost the opposite to Woody Murph, isn't it? It's 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 harnessing that emotion. And I suspect that's that's true in the media business. How do you, with the ups and downs and the wins and the losses, which come so quickly in a media business, how do you take away the emotion of that? Because that's a that's a big challenge when you when you're coaching a footy club. It's a good. It's a very interesting question, um, Rizzy, because at the end of the day, a lot of personalities, particularly in media, are 
the high yellows, the high emotional um, guys, the guys that are expressive emotionally. And that's, that's, I think, what I actually really like about what we do is that we take the time to understand the personalities, take the yeah. time to understand who they are, how they operate, what motivates them, where they go under pressure. And then that information is what actually allows the individual to enhance their performance, understand yourself and understand others. So yeah. I think the insight is the biggest piece for harnessing the emotion and understanding how to move forward in your in your business. Um, and that's that's all the way through the business, from the leaders all the way through to, you know, the people at every level. So I think you're right. Uh, I mean, my experience is that there's a lot of, you know, high emotion running in, in media. And Carly, you'd attest to this as well, I'm sure. But there's a lot of personalities that have a lot of energy and a lot of emotion. Um, but harnessing that in, in what you do every day is, is really important. And understanding how others will respond to it. Um, it's, it's really important. The insight is, is key. So, Mel, before Jared also said to you off the back of that, you know, tell us about your experience, which you've done, but also what sort of led you to us, I guess, and um, it is a little bit of a career change, you know, moving from leading, leading a big team in a sales organisation to coming and, you know, being a facilitator and being someone who helps direct the team without actually being involved in the team. Um, so I guess my question is, you know, why why does this interest you, and and how did you how did you kind of decide to come and join our team? It's a good question because at this I mean after twenty years in media um, and in the corporate setting and with a health background, they're all kind of things. I actually sat back and you know without I hear there's some sort of a virus going around, but um, that actually has enabled a lot of people to sit back and reevaluate. And it did for me, just like it has for a lot of people. And I thought a lot about what I loved about my work that I've done in the past. And the truth about it is it was the people um, and the people work that I loved the most. And that was the part that, that was the most interesting, fascinating. And I found myself just leaning into it. So um, for a period of time, I mean, don't get me wrong, forecasting and spreadsheets are wonderful. They have their place. But um, I spent most of my time with the people. And I think that's what led to the success of the organisations that I worked for. It was actually investing in the people and the results, the results came. So I decided to invest in that more so. Um, Carly, I thought, be true to what, what your passion is. And for me, the people are, the, are my passion. And I enjoy I think, it. Well, I think I'm going to ask you a question, Carly, because I think one of the strengths of our company, which I, mean, I think you'll agree, we're, we're all somewhat connected because we're all really passionate about the leadership and culture space. I mean, Murph and I met each other, you know, 100 years ago. But, Carly, you sort of recommended Melina. I'm going to ask you the question. I mean, what, what did you see in Melina that you felt would fit in with performance by design? Yeah, so um, my background is in the media industry too. So Melina was on the sales side and I was on the agency side. So it was more of a client and customer relationship, if you like. Um, but, you know, everyone knows everybody within the industry and Melina's reputation was always that, you know, she was a great leader. She really led teams well. All of her teams would always say, you know, she's awesome, love her. Um, and... From that, we saw great results. So, you know, if we were working with Foxtel or with Network 10 on specific deals, we knew that, you know, we would get the outcomes we needed because Mel was running that team. So so I think it was more from a leadership point of view, Rosie, that, you know, my recommendation for Mel. I know, you know, from the work we do, you have, to, you know, you want to work with good people, people who are actually good humans. And I know that that's what Mel is and she led her teams really well. So, um I know it is a bit of a different, you know, aspect from being a leader to helping guide leaders, um, but all the right ingredients are there. So I'm really excited to have you part of the team, Mel. Hey, Murph, Thanks. I'm going to ask you a question too because one thing we talk about is leaders are always watched and it's interesting. Do you think mm. leaders understand not only internally because what Carly's talking about, Carly never worked with Melina or worked under Melina, but even externally, you can tell how the brand of a leader not only uh, permeates through your own organisation, it actually goes external as well. Do you, do you think leaders mm. don't 
understand that enough that they're not only being looked at by their own company, but they're being looked at by everyone, really. Yeah, 100%, Rizzi. The, <clears throat> the good leaders do, but I think a lot of good leaders un- understand it almost innately. So there's so many... I, I work with an executive team uh, earlier in the week, and we, we went through what, what is your purpose, what are your values, and it was fascinating. Like, to be frank, most of them really couldn't... Um, articulate that clearly so they might broadly know now yeah. good leaders will have a really clear brand even if they haven't you know thought so much about it they just yeah. become they become known for who they are and what yeah. they do and, and that sounds a bit like what Carly describes with Mel but not not enough people take the time out to say okay why do I do what I do what are my values what behaviors are integral to that and therefore what do I need to you know um, keep doing and what are my areas for growth in order to be the leader that I wish I'd, I could be or I wish I'd had. So I think yep. it, 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 it's quite phenomenal really, Rizzi. I reckon how few people yeah. really step back and take the time. And to be fair, like it's probably only in the last 10 years that I've really started to do that myself. Like, yeah. Yeah. And perhaps you have to find your way through it, but I think the earlier you can find your way through it, the better. And, I, and it probably... Thing, Murph, isn't it? Like we always say, you get the job because you're competent at the skills, not necessarily because you have been trained to be a good leader. Yep. And that's why what we do is starting to be in more demand, is because people are realizing how important those leadership skills are. Well, it goes to the whole coaching division, doesn't it? You know, that we've set up. So, where, where you've got your team, and that's great. But the truth about it is, if you feel the head of that team and you're leading that team, then if you're not clear about who you are, then how the hell are they? And, and the, the, the easy activity to do is, you know, use a couple of words to describe your leader. And if you get this big, long list, it's really clear that the leader hasn't got yeah, a, brand. Clear, a clear brand. So I think yeah. it's a good exercise. And I was just going to throw to Mel there is, is you know, as, as a leader, what are some of the characteristics that, that you've, you've seen that you really admire? Like, who do you admire as a leader? Who, who's who's um, really had a, a positive impact on you and why? Yeah, it's it's an interesting question because there is a stereotype of, of leaders in, in the past and you think the leader needs to be strong and bold and out there and whatever else, but sometimes that's actually not necessarily a hallmark of a great leader. Um, so I think the first thing is breaking down the stereotypes of what a great leader is. I mean, I, I think a lot about Jacinda Ardern um she on paper she probably wouldn't be um she wouldn't look like somebody who you would think would lead a country but she's a phenomenal leader for a whole host of reasons and she has qualities that you wouldn't necessarily um expect to see um but she 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 leads with passion she leads with compassion she leads with um a huge amount of knowledge and intellect and she just has a, a great package so there's a there's different types of leaders. There are leaders like her, which I, I think she has she has a lot to learn from. Um, I've seen great leaders um, within the organisations that I've worked for. And I think the part about it for me that makes them great leaders is that they all value their employees' contribution and everybody has a place. And that is, that is one of the cornerstones of culture. Um, the employees feel like they are valued, they have a voice, and they create the culture. So it's a very simple, um, I think, very simple concept, but I've seen great leaders um, in the organisations that I've worked for invite the voices of their teams. Uh, and everybody, no matter what their personality, has has a voice and contribute to that culture. So It's interesting because I think, Mel, you're right. I mean, it's funny, the good leaders tend to, serve the people that are there. They, they're aware of their job and their brand and they're obviously working you know, for a company and for a board and shareholders. But it, it's a really good point, isn't it? They, they tend to serve the people that they're there and, and they're there for the people. I reckon, I reckon it's a really good point. Absolutely. I mean, the, the simple thing about it is that everybody has an impact on culture. Every single yeah. person in a workplace has an impact on culture. Um, whether it's good or bad, if you're there, you are yeah. you are making a contribution to culture in the organisation, and 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 behaviours are contagious, like we know. You know, a leader walks in, 
uh, with a certain tone and they set the tone for the, for the, the 200 people working with them. There's a lot about, uh, to Jared's point, that it's the consciousness about who you are as a leader and how you lead and understanding that is very important, critical. Well, Mel, well, thanks very much. It's great to have you on board. We've just run out of time on the Culture Council Live. So uh, thanks. As I said, fantastic to have you on the oh, board. And we're really looking forward to it. I was going to just suggest, Rosie, that perhaps Mel, being a, a former speech therapist, can give you a hand. She might, might be able to help you well, articulate yourself a bit more clearly every now and again. Yeah, well, that's, 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 <laughs> I like that real talk, Murph. That's good feedback. We, we're all about feedback in this organisation. So I appreciate the feedback and I'll shoot you a text to thank you after we get off the call. Thanks very much. And we'll see you, Carly, Mel, Murph. We'll see you again on the Culture Couch Live.